raise your hand if as a kid you ever said you wanted to be a zombie when you were growing up. Okay, so we have a few people in the audience who had a way better childhood than we did. But even though I'm a zombie enthusiast, I never wanted to be a zombie when I was growing up. Lately, zombies have been big cultural objects. We see zombies represented in the ads of many popular retailers. Every Halloween, there's more zombie propaganda than one may care to see. Right now, there are popular television shows about zombies. Books and movies about the genre are also abundant. But this isn't really a talk about zombies. It's about what they represent. A few weeks ago, I was on my way to UNLV for a class. I got into my car, I buckled my seatbelt, I turned on the radio, I checked my rearview mirrors as I reversed out of the driveway and I looked for children playing in the neighborhood, and then I went into autopilot. I woke up as I was turning left onto UNLV's campus. Now, when I say that I woke up, I don't mean to say that I fell asleep at my destination, or, I'm sorry, <laughs> fell asleep behind the wheel, but I came into conscious awareness when I arrived at my destination. For the length of that commute, I was transformed into a zombie commuter. If you could just imagine. Uh, I had been to my destination so many times that I didn't need to think about where I was going or what I was doing. I just got into my car and I drove and I woke up when I arrived at my destination. Now, how many of you have ever driven or done anything on autopilot? Yeah, it's pretty common. But think about what would happen if we were to not just live part of our lives, but we, if we were to live all of our lives, if we were to be present in every moment in which we were granted on this earth, if we were able to treasure each and every experience that we are granted. Now, we were the lucky ones that made it this far. We survived conception, we survived birth, we survived our childhoods, although some of us by the skin of our teeth, just asked my husband Brian's parents, he was a daredevil. But we are here, we made it. Why not live each and every moment of our lives? I mean, what's the worst that could happen if we were to maintain consciousness all of the time? What if we were to find careers that we love? Now, I understand that it may not be possible for all of us to just up and quit our jobs. I understand we live in the real world and we have bills to pay, but what would happen if we were to find something that we loved and we pursued it? Why not volunteer at your favorite nonprofit organization, at a school, at an at-risk school, or even at your an, an alumni association? Why not get connected to our experiences and to our lives? According to research by the Corporation for National and Community Service, did you know that volunteers both reap social and health benefits from volunteering? So, if you are a volunteer, you actually will live longer than counterparts who don't volunteer. Volunteers also have greater, uh, they, they have less risk of disease, they have less stress in their lives. They have these social networks and ties that they're able to create via those volunteer organizations. And in some cases, you can even learn new skills that you didn't have prior to volunteering. Why not get connected with our fellow human being? Why not love each other? Why not express that love via that interaction, via giving back to your community? When my four-year-old Alexandria has a rough day and cries, she comes to me and I tell her, take a deep breath. Now, if I fail to tell her to take a deep breath while she's crying, through her tears, she will ask her mama, why aren't you telling me to take a deep breath? She has taught her mama that that works for her. So right now, I want all of you to take a deep breath. And when you let it out, come back into this experience. Bring yourself back into this moment. Remember, you want to experience every moment of your life. Why give any of it away? There's a certain kinship that comes with being conscious on this earth right now. There's a Mayan greeting, in la cache, a la king. 
which means I am you and you are me. Think about this for a second. If we were to truly embrace the, the ourselves within others, imagine how much more compassionate we would be towards one another. Why not embrace this kinship? Why not embrace this companionship? Or, I'm sorry, this, these, um, ah, I apologize. Why not embrace this connection to one another? Now, when you go outside, I want you to feel the sun on your skin. In a drizzle, I want you to feel the raindrops on your face. Get connected to nature. Medi or e exercises like yoga and Tai Chi just serve to deepen that connection that we have with ourselves. Meditation also helps to deepen our connection with ourselves and with the environment. And I understand everyone may not have time for things like that, but if you do, if you can take the time, you will reap so much benefit from that. It, but if you find that you don't have the time, you can certainly listen to, listening to a soothing piece of music is also beneficial for you. I want us all to try something new. Get connected with one another. Enjoy this connection that we have. Foster the relationships that, w that are around us. Acknowledge ourselves in others. Love one another. When you listen to music, I don't want you to just hear the music. I want you to feel the sounds with your inner essence. When you eat foods, I want you to savor the flavor notes that are in those foods. When you consume goods, I want you to appreciate the material possessions that you already have. I want you to truly experience the, the, experience the experiences that we are granted in this life. Life is not for the undead. Life is not for zombies. Life is for the living. Thank you.